Hello again, YouTube Halo community. It has been the longest time since you have seen my awesome face. I am Constantine Oddly Right. Uh, I've been away for a long, long time, tried to, you know, make a living in the real world. Then Halo came back with a vengeance. I've been streaming a lot on Twitch TV, doing a lot of breakdowns of Halo Pro scrims. But when I've been talking about it, People have been asking, oddly, when are you going to make YouTube videos again? Oddly, when are you going to make YouTube videos again? And the answer is now. I've been trying to figure out what I wanted to do for my first video back. And lately I've been harping on a lot of oddball related things. And I think that's an area where the Halo community at large needs to learn how to play oddball better. And so I have three simple rules you can follow to help elevate your game. And I'm also going to, at the end of the video, talk about the concept of playing the clock in Oddball, which is also something I don't really see happening as often, except in situations where people just overslay to the point that you don't have a choice but to play the clock. Like, there's no chance you're going to hit those 100 points, so you just drop the ball. But I want to start talking about that in terms of what you should start looking at to determine when it's okay to start playing for that clock. But first, we're going to talk about those three rules. We're going to switch over to this handy dandy TAC Maps app. If you have not seen this app yet, it is TAC Maps. It is free on the Microsoft Store. Uh, they have all of the Halo Infinite overhead maps. I'm actually going to reset this. You can look at any of the game types and even up or lower the players per team. So if you wanted to use it for 2v2 talks, you could. But we're looking at Oddball. And I'm going to start off with Live Fire to talk about Oddball rule number one as I set these guys into position. You can drag and drop all of the little Spartans where you want to do. And we're going to talk about a pretty common setup on this, around the C stronghold, the tower on Live Fire. Typically, you'll have your Oddball carrier here, and then you'll have a player hold, holding this area and a player holding Nest in your best possible setup, generally. But rule number one in Oddball is that you always want a buffer between you and any open lane when you're positioning the ball. And what I mean by open lanes, you can be pushed from any of these three angles while you're on tower. These are the primary lanes. There are other routes, unique ways to approach, but those are the three primary ones. So if your Oddball carrier is back tower or even low back tower in the mud river, whatever, you want somebody who's able to watch Brutes, somebody who's able to watch top middle. That can be done either from top tower or from the C territory area. And then you have to have somebody watching the B area. Usually someone on Nest will do that. You can even do that pushed up as far as the B stronghold. And he covers all of these angles as well as any angle coming from bottom middle. Of course this player is sort of isolated and heavily exposed, but he's able to engage a lot sooner than if you have him all the way back in Nest. However, let's say hypothetically this player does push up and he dies. He gets picked off. Now the Nest is open. What is your oddball carrier to do? The obvious answer, well, you just play ball. Like You wait till they actually get there, then you position yourself to play ball. But I'm here to say that's actually not the best way to play oddball. If they push one or two people into Nest, that's one or two people that aren't on this side of the map, or that aren't on this side of the map, where you do have a buffer. So these players can actually just start pushing, and you rotate with them. If your buffer dies on either side, you just rotate in the direction, or away from the direction that the pressure is coming from, and you drop the ball as you rotate, and you fight if necessary. But no matter what, at, at best, it's a three-on-three three situation. At, at worst, for the other team, it's three-on-two, three-on-one, and you're able to just keep the ball away from the pressure that's coming from Nest at that point. That is the summary of oddball rule number one. I'm going to show a few more examples. Let's say, hypothetically, you are set up around A. You're in this corner. You had a player that was sitting on a plat, and you had a player top-middle guarding the, the middle push, and a player all the way out by overshield. Now your enemy team all spawn B, and they just hard push through this small door, and your player on A is just melted. What do you do? You just rotate right out. Pressure's coming from here. 
you're able to get all the way into this open field long before they are anywhere near contesting you. And then, worst case scenario, you turn and fight as they're chasing you. Let's say the reverse happens. Your player on A is fine, but your player out by overshield gets spotted by two spawners that happen to spawn tower and just push out. He gets picked. Well, now you just rotate toward B. You get to an area where you can play ball if numbers don't ever recover for you. Chances are that player that died is going to spawn at nest anyway, so now you have a new buffer in position. All the other players just help you get this rotation out. If you run into equal pressure on your way there, you just drop and fight, because again, you have three players still alive. If there's two players out here, you have a strong side push on this way. You have lead blockers. It's just like football. You, you're running behind your tight end and your fullback while you're running with the, with the ball. But I also am here to say that having a player all the way out here as your buffer, not exactly the best job. The buffer does not have to be a physical body in the way. He just has to make sure he's covering those angles. He can actually hold from key door and block this lane all the same while also covering the lane down here through key door while you are up here hiding with the ball. And that ties pretty well into oddball rule number two. I'm going to switch over to Recharge, which is the best map to illustrate Oddball Rule number 2. As we talk about a pretty common setup, you'll see players in Commando by Glass and players in Top A. All the ball here is also somewhere Top A. And then your last player is either somewhere on Bat Ledge or, for this instance, we're going to say in Heaven. But Oddball Rule number 2 is that crosses are everything, and I mean absolutely everything in Oddball. If you are the player top A in Oddball, and for some reason you drift over here, and you start looking for damage to deal in tower, you are throwing the game for your team. You are throwing your setup, you are fucking up. And there's nothing more to be said than that, because your job is to watch this cross. You make sure people do not come through big, through a long haul, big door, untouched. You make sure nobody comes through glass untouched. Because your job is to protect this guy. Make sure anybody that engage on him is not full shields when they engage. His job, likewise, is to watch top A and the lower A platform on Mangler. Anybody that goes across Mangler, anybody that runs on this A catwalk, he is supposed to be dealing damage to make sure that they do not come through this store full shields. Your player Heaven, if they are actually playing Heaven, is also watching Long Haul. So you have two sidelines on Long Haul. Crosses are everything. And basically your job is to just make sure you are covering each other because... On this map, really wide setups are common, so at any given time, your player on Mando is basically the weak side of your map, except for the fact that he has people watching his crosses. He has help, even if it doesn't look like he has help. If you have that player bat ledge instead, they can also drift over to these stairs and watch another one of his crosses, even though it's a much smaller one, in these back stairs to make sure that if anybody slips through, gets to back stairs, they get cleaned up by the player that is covering him from Drifting Bat Ledge. You'll hear uh, Cloud9 typically playing a 2-2 split sort of thing, and that's because they've got a player covering their glass player while the other two players are playing A. I'm going to switch over to Streets for a second to illustrate another couple of examples in this situation, where let's say you've got the ball back A, you've got your player up on Heaven, We've got a player sitting here in caution, but then you have a player sitting in cafe. And the problem with cafe is that this player can be easily pushed without anybody able to help him by just two players coming purple. This guy's now trapped. He's not really going to be able to run away safely at all, so he's going to die. But let's say he follows oddball rule number two. He knows that he's not actually here to just 
physically hold the lane to follow oddball rule number one, he's got oddball rule number two in mind as well. So he hides behind the box to the generator. Those players push, and they think they see a nice, easy kill on this oddball, oddball carrier, so they just keep pushing. Well, he turns. Now he's got shots in their back. Oddball carrier is protected. They get a double kill. These guys are both off the map. Then it's a four on two on the rest of the map while these guys fight and cover each other. Because you also have this cross being held from all the way over here. He gets a couple of free shots in. So these two guys are actually in a three on two situation because instead of getting picked and dying and turning it into a two on two or two on one and a half if you count the oddball carrier as less than one, he has actually had plenty of help and he did not get himself picked beforehand. Another alternative spot for this same situation, if the odd, especially if the oddball is more toward PD rather than back A, is to actually sit down here in this oddball spot. This is a spot I actually really love to use in matchmaking because it allows you to cover bottom middle a lot more aggressively. It keeps you close to rockets. It allows you to see the tires transition that people will try to use. And if those same people were to come through the shotgun spawn, they're not actually looking for you, even if they get all the way past this generator, where they might be more likely to see you. They're going all the way around, and they think it's even safer, but your oddball is in PD, so they have to go all the way through hollows and through A to get there. And now guess what? You're covering that cross, because crosses are everything that is oddball rule number two. You've got it taken care of. Another example, if you have the ball in C, you've got a player either sitting up here, which this is a risky position up on B balcony if you are holding the oddball in C because PD spawners can often just easily pick you. So you'll see a lot of people actually play from lower down by, these, by the bottom of the stairs, but their job, they realize, is just to keep positions so that the purple street area is constantly pressured because they know their job is to cover crosses, because, that's right, crosses are everything. That pretty much summarizes oddball rule number three. Rule number two is a little more obvious. Uh, it's one that people are typically more, more likely to grasp, but it's still worth mentioning, because you'll see players just holding the oddball up here and just staring out. Or, say, on sh on recharge, they'll be the one holding the ball for in the position to watch the cross and not actually having someone watch the cross there. Or, let's say, on live fire, they are just moving the ball and getting as soon as stuff starts to fall apart, they're immediately just setting themselves on a ledge, getting ready to drop. In that case, they're not following oddball rule number three, and that is the oddball carrier is a combatant. At any given time, you need to remember that ball can be thrown on the ground. You can get kills. You need to pay attention to what kills your teammates have in the feed. You need to make sure you are also trying to contribute to those kills if there's a situation where you guys might actually slay out, or if you're following rules one and two really well, chances are you're fighting players that are already weakened shields anyway, so there's a really good chance you're going to come out ahead. If you're rotating away, chances are you're rotating toward players that are by themselves or isolated or just coming off spawns. It's going to be an easy kill. You get that kill, you keep moving. Keep following rules one and two. Add in rule number three. All of those work together for a really clean oddball game where you'll find you'll get a lot larger runs of time and a lot less situations where you're having to throw the ball off the map and reset the map to a neutral state where you're all going back to fighting over the spawn in the middle of the map or on recharge just seeing the ball sit on its spawn and batteries for long periods of time because hey somebody went to sea and just threw the ball off and said eh, we don't want to play that way anymore but if you remember that the oddball carrier is able to fight, those C setups that are often desperation setups, you'll see players just play the ball really early, and then 
their team wins the slaying battle anyway, then they have to push out of this weak side of the map to go all the way back to get the ball. But they just threw away that setup, and they gave their opponents spawns in pipes in the process. Or in A, so that those players have the better positions for fighting this. But that summarizes the three oddball rules. I'm going to uh, throw all of those up on screen at the same time here in just a second. If I can find a place. I'm doing this uh, kind of all off the cuff at the moment, so please forgive me for any awkwardness at the moment. There we go, this will this will work out. I know these sizes look absolutely fantastic. God bless my on the off the cuff editing. You guys had no idea you were getting this video. I just kind of threw this all together in about 15 minutes. So please forgive my awkwardness, but there's your three oddball rules all on the screen at the same time. Always keep a buffer between you and open lanes. If the open lane closes or if your uh, if your allies die from heavy pressure from those lanes, rotate the ball away from the pressure. Don't just immediately assume you have to play the ball. Or if you see a teammate like is holding that open lane and then they just push all the way across the map. Take the ball towards your teammates that are nearby. Try to get between them. Don't just sit there and fight. Oddball rule number two. Crosses are everything. Don't worry about fighting the foe that's in front of you when you can be fighting the foe that is running at your teammate. It's so useful in oddball where they're forced to go into a position to deal with a specific player. Don't expose yourself. Hide. Hide in a corner. Let them run past you. Then start shooting them. You'll get so much out of that. And oddball rule number three, the oddball carrier is a combatant. Make sure you're dropping the ball and fighting before just assuming you have to throw the ball off the map. And now we're going to talk, as I switch back to my lovely face, I'm sure you missed me with that TAC Maps app, which I highly recommend using for discussing team strategies and stuff. But we're going to talk about oddball playing the clock. I was asked a question recently. Hypothetically, let's say you're up 10 seconds in oddball and there's 45 seconds left of game time. Do you pick it up or do you drop it and slay? Obviously, situation matters. Uh, is that 90 to 80? Is that 70 to 60? Like, all of those matter. The map also matters. Like, if it's a larger map, it's a lot easier to just focus on slaying out and dealing with that. But... The main thing I've been saying with regards to this, think of it in terms of football. You know, there's four quarters in a game of football. If you're the team with the lead in football and it's midway through the third quarter, like if it there's two and a half minutes even left on the clock in odd ball, you don't have to keep passing the ball, or in this case, holding the ball. You want to just run the clock out. And to run the clock out, you, play, you run plays up the middle. You let the runner get tackled in bounds. In this case, you leave the ball on the ground. You let that clock keep ticking because that puts more pressure on your opponents. Of course, we can argue NFL these days. You got players like Tom Brady, uh, Patrick Mahomes. All of those players will just run a two-minute drill, drill and score anyway. But point remains. In the third and fourth quarter, if you have the lead, you have no reason to just make risky plays like trying to hold the ball in a setup. Just try to hold the ball in places where you're milking little bits of time while still following oddball rule number one, where you have your ball with your teammates, so you're constantly able to fight. And oddball rule number three, where you, if pressure does come, you drop it immediately and start fighting because if you're not in a setup position, you're in a great position to just bait the ball after the fight comes like just leave it there and keep fighting if you are a great way to think of it instead of first second third fourth down think of it as one two three or four alive if you have all enemy teams dead that's fourth down uh you're probably needing to pass if you don't have the lead 
and if you are if you do have the lead and it's third fourth three four down it's probably safe to get more points and pass but uh, analogy probably got a little dicey there but my point remains like the way to think about clock in this the closer it gets toward the end of the game the more you want to just pay attention to whether or not you have a lead and focus on putting the ball in positions where you can bait it. Like, if you do have the lead, don't try to pull the ball away to the edge of the map. Don't try to hard commit to grabbing ball time. Just force your enemies to make the plays. The pressure is going to be on them to execute perfectly, and you can upset that a lot more easily. The bigger your lead, the more open spaces there are on the map, the less often your team's going forward dead, the more you can just run the ball to the middle of the map and leave it there and just slay out. But that is... That's that. Um, those are my notes for Oddball so far in Halo Infinite. I think some of the best teams to watch if you actually want to improve your own Oddball gameplay are... Sentinels, surprisingly, Frosty is amazing at calling ball rotations for his team. Uh, unfortunately, they don't stream very often for their scrims or even tournament play, so it's harder to catch that. Uh, Cloud9 are also really good to watch for ball rotations. And FaZe are actually one of the best teams to watch for oddball setups. Once they have sort of committed to getting a setup, they tend to under communicate so it's harder for them to get what they need but those are the three teams i would say if you want to try to take away bits and pieces for your own oddball gameplay who to watch phase have great setups sentinels have oddball rule number one like ingrained into them between snakebite and frosty those two players are immaculate at it and then cloud nine have a really good just general oddball gameplay uh, teams i would not follow for uh, oddball play, E United, and Optic. Although those teams are excellent and definitely top five teams, Optic tend to have really undisciplined oddball play and rely a lot on over slaying in order to get their oddballs, their oddball wins. And E United tend to just leave the ball carrier exposed really often. And although Rain is really good at following oddball rule number two. You'll also see a lot of situations where the oddball for them is the player that is sitting in the position that should be holding a cross, and he's holding the ball at the same time, so he can't shoot. And in the process, the player comes into his sight, and he, gets, he takes free damage, and is just kind of forced to back off and not do anything. So yes, look at Sentinels number one, Cloud9 number two, Phase number three, don't look at Optic, don't look at E United. Those are your notes. I have been, oddly, once again, talking about competitive Halo, analyzing Halo, and showing you off a new tool to use for yourself, giving you three oddball rules. But whether you agree with me or not, I am literally always right. Constantine oddly right. You guys have a great day.